What's going on, everybody? Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Emma Santapani. For those of you who do, welcome back. Great to see you again. Thank you for watching. Uh, today, I have something a little different for you guys. Um, you know, unless you are someone who is independently wealthy and you can spend all the time in the world in the gym, or maybe you don't care about money at all and you live in a van uh, down by the river, uh, most of us are gonna be faced with scenarios where we need to get in the gym, get it done, get the hell out of there, and get on with our days. So, you know, maybe in a perfect world where I don't know, maybe you could train twice a day and split everything up perfectly and give everything its dedicated attention. Uh, most of us, in an effort to hit all the muscle groups we need to hit and hit them well, uh, but also not spend uh, an exorbitant amount of time in the gym, we will combine body parts and, um, you know, have different training splits uh, so that we can, in fact, uh, live our lives. And one thing that I will do sometimes is the workout that I have here today, which is the combination of chest and shoulders. And, you know, it's probably a little bit more common where people will combine uh, chest and biceps or chest and triceps, and then uh, maybe back and biceps or back and triceps. I find that Maybe just because my arms have always been a little bit of a stronger body part, uh, I can kind of get away with a little bit less direct arm stimulation, but I do prefer to always hit chest and shoulders. Or, you know, there may be times where maybe one week out of the month, uh, I'm not able to break everything down the way that I would like to, so I'll combine chest and shoulders or chest and arms or something to that effect. And then whichever one, you know, the next time around has to get sacrificed, I'll alternate and sacrifice at that time. Um, but today, chest and shoulders. Now, this isn't based in science or anything like that, but just kind of how I make sense of it in my mind and how I lay the workout out is because I view the chest training as kind of being a little bit more important as the shoulder training. Now, why? Because if, well, let's, let's consider this. I always tell people, listen, if you were very pressed for time, you got a really busy schedule, you don't have a lot of time to get dedicate to the gym. Most of us can usually get into the gym three days a week. And if you're gonna get in the gym three days a week, my personal belief is that chest, back, in legs should be the muscle groups that you hit. Why? Because if you hit those muscle groups and you hit them really hard, you will still indirectly hit the muscle groups that you didn't directly train, right? So train, train your chest really heavy, you're still gonna train triceps and you know your front and medial delts. Train your back really heavy, you're still gonna hit your biceps and your rear delts and maybe even medial delt, right? You can definitely get away by training chest, back, and legs and still kind of get everything. Is it ideal, long-term, uh, the most optimal? No, not necessarily. Uh, but you can, you, can, um, you can cover a lot of ground that way. You can look pretty damn good, okay? You could be pretty freaking big getting it done that way. Uh, so that said, if we're gonna combine chest and shoulders, yes, I do view chest as the more fundamental muscle group that we're training. And again, why? because if I begin the workout with say flat uh, barbell bench press, I'm still gonna hit my delts. Um, so I would rather, and obviously I'll be able to train my chest heavy, relatively heavy. Uh, I would rather do that than begin the workout with uh, shoulders because then it's gonna take a lot out of the, the chest training aspect of it, uh, especially when it comes time to press. So I choose to begin the workout with barbell bench press. Uh, a lot of people will say, oh, bodybuilders, they shouldn't uh, do the barbell bench. Uh, it puts you in a, you know, puts you at risk for tearing a pec and things like that. I don't know. I've always been a fan of the flat bench. Uh, I feel good when I do it. If I felt like it was dangerous for me, I probably would shy away from it. So if you're somebody and you, you when you train uh, chest and you do flat barbell bench, uh, you're getting tweaks and you know uh, things like that and it doesn't feel right then maybe you should stay away from it i have success with it i like it i view it as a foundational movement so i always incorporate it so starting with flat bench um you know 
uh, please maybe forgive kind of the lack of weight you see me moving. I've been dieting for a while. I had some photo shoots this week. I'm a bit depleted, so I don't kind of have the normal juice behind me that maybe I normally would. Uh, so I hope I don't disappoint you. But even in this scenario, I'm still training it uh, relatively heavy in terms of, you know, for me, right? When you see me doing this today, uh, whether it's embarrassing for, or not for me to say it, yes, it felt heavy. <laughs> um, so I like to, like I said, I like to put a lot of my energy and strength first in the workout into that flat barbell, right? After that, I move on and I do an isolation movement, right? Peck, peck, or peck fly. I love this movement. I connect really, really well with it. Um, normally, right, if I was going to train chest by itself, I might alternate press fly, press fly. Maybe I would do two presses and then I would fly. Um, but I chose to do the barbell bench, then the pec fly, then dips, right? And there's a reason for that. I view dips as a pressing movement. And uh, you know, in, in a normal situation, the, the dip bars that I would be using would be set a little bit further apart. And because of that, I would usually add on some additional weight. Um, usually, at the, at the minimum, add an additional plate, usually up to two plates, uh, and by then I'm doing a pretty substantial pressing movement. I chose to put it third because I feel that dips are really a good kind of transitional exercise. Um, you're, you're hitting a lot of chest, but you're also hitting a lot of tricep and delt. So I use it to kind of bridge between chest in the shoulder training portion of the workout. It's not a really elaborate workout, right? So two pressing movements and a fly, so flat bench and dips being the two pressing movements and the pec deck being the fly movement. Then I move on uh, and I begin with a rear, uh, rear pec deck, right? To, re to hit the rear delts. Because if you are training chest, uh, you're doing a flat bench, you're gonna get quite a bit of front and medial stimulation, but certainly nothing in the rear. So doing an isolation movement for the rear delts definitely makes sense, uh, because after that I move on and do the Smith machine, right? Normally if I were training chest by itself, sometimes I use the Smith machine, sometimes I just do a free weight barbell press. Both have their advantages, uh, but if you kind of look at the breakdown of the workout, beginning with chest, it's a press, then a fly, then dips. Then once you move on to shoulders, it's the reverse fly, and then the barbell press. So, in my head, it's kind of like a, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if that's stupid or not. <laughs> but uh, that's just kind of the way I, I envision it, right? Press, isolation, another press that ties together chest and uh, shoulders, then an isolation movement, then a press. And uh, believe it or not, you know, the workout both uh, in terms of, I guess we'll call it efficacy. I mean, by the time I'm done with it, right, it's only only three extra, three movements for chest, uh, three for shoulders, although, you know, we can kind of say we're sharing one of those. Um, but I'm toast after it, okay? And you should really be able to complete this workout in 40, 45 minutes. An hour would be max, but you know, if you're pressed for time, and you know, a lot of us unfortunately are gonna find ourselves in that situation. Right? Whether it's because of work, uh, family stuff, uh, who knows? You know, who knows what, what might be on your plate? Um, but a lot of us, you know, we've got stuff going on. Sometimes you got to get in there, you got to crank it, and get the hell on with your day. This is a good way to do that. Um, so give it a shot next time. You know, uh, sometimes you know the week ahead is going to be tough. You know you've got a lot on your plate. So maybe try to combine things in a way where you're gonna still give everything the attention that it needs, but you're not gonna be spending um, a ridiculous amount of time in the gym. I hope you enjoyed it. Comment below. Uh, let us know what you think, what you wanna see next time. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you guys soon.